All right, so step three of cell signaling is going to be the actual response. So cell signaling is going to lead to regulation of many, many different activities because think about it, we have all these differentiated cells and they are supposed to carry out different processes. So it means when they receive a signal, they are going to behave in a certain way. So to give you a few examples, cells can actually change their gene expression when they receive a, sing a signal. Cells can also modify their cytoplasmic activities when they receive a signal. And if we compare the two, you will notice that gene expression takes much longer to complete. So let me walk you through this right now here. We have a signaling molecule that binds to the cell surface receptor. And if we follow this pathway, which is a cytoplasmic pathway, that means all these proteins are already there. So we have the scaffold of proteins and they need to be activated to reach the target protein. So that means this process is going to be really, really fast, less than a second, sometimes two minutes. But if you compare the cytoplasmic activities with gene expression, now this involves the actual synthesis of a protein. So it means not only that we have to initiate the phosphorylation cascade right here, not only we have to turn on the, tar um, the target protein, which is going to be a transcription factor, then the gene needs to be located within the DNA that needs to be expressed. And then transcription needs to be taken place because you want to make mRNA. And then mRNA needs to be translated into the protein. And then finally, this protein needs to be folded to be functioning. So you see how many different steps are happening here in this pathway? For this reason, we would say that gene expression takes longer to complete and it is generally slower. So we have minutes to hours until the altered cell behavior is observed. So another type of response that cell signaling can lead to is actually apoptosis. So apoptosis refers to programmed or controlled cell death. So cells are normally going to have specific enzymes that can actually break down proteins. And they also have enzymes that break down nucleic acids or lipids all the macromolecules. So apoptosis can be triggered by death signaling ligands that can be extracellular. And sometimes apopt apoptosis will be triggered because the cell, so it's an internal mechanism because the cell had actually um, accumulated too much DNA damage. So it has too many mutations. And if it continues to live, it continues to divide, that, that cell could actually become cancerous. So you would not want that. So as a protective mechanism, DNA damage is going to be signaling or triggering the apoptosis of the cell. Another example would be protein misfolding. So obviously, proteins that are being misfolded by the cell indicate that something is going on with that cell. So you definitely do not want it to continue this process. And this is right here is um, a diagram of an organism that we call C. elegans. So this is actually a tiny little worm that doesn't have a lot of cells and you can, and it's actually a model organism. And you can see their cells have a receptor for death signaling molecule. So normally when that signaling molecule is not there, the protein that's sitting within the mitochondria is going to inactivate all those caspases. So it means no cell death occurs. However, when there is a death signaling molecule that binds to the receptor, this protein within the mitochondria membrane is inactivated. So therefore, all the caspases are going to be turned on. So now protease is going to break down proteins, nucleases will break down nucleic acids and so forth. So what we're going to observe is the actual dying of the cell. So the cell is undergoing apoptosis. And one of the things that we notice right away is actually how they form the tiny little bleb. So we see the cell starts to bleb. So you can see the membrane is going to enclose digested particles of the cell and eventually will be completely eliminated. So here's an example of an apoptosis of a human white blood cell. So you can see this one is a normal cell and this is the cell that's undergoing apoptosis. So all of these tiny pockets that contain digested um, proteins, nucleic acids, and all the cellular components, uh, those little vesicles are going to be engulfed by macrophages, phagocytic cells, so that way they can be completely eliminated. So now, apoptosis is a very important part for the development and maintenance of all animals. And an example I have here is the paw development in mouse. 
um, you can see there is some tissue between the digits, between the little tiny fingers of the mouse. And then those cells right here are going to undergo apoptosis. And therefore, the spaces are going to be developed between the actual digits. So as I said before, this process is really, really important. And the last piece of information that I wanted to just add, um, look at this. This is just one example of B-cell receptor signaling pathway. Do you see how many proteins are involved in the actual pathway? And one activates the other one, another one deactivates another one. So, so this is, this, there is this chain reaction. So you can see how complex complex those systems are and some proteins have to be expressed you know because you have to do transcription and translation so they're not even there yet so um what we've covered in class really we're just barely scratching the surface but i feel like you know when you look at this that um you can appreciate the complexity of life and how how wonderful things are and how most of the times those cell signaling pathways are just functioning perfectly